Welcome to JetNexus Tutorials for fast, scalable and resilient applications. Tutorial 1 is our zero to hero, so we're going to show you everything from downloading the virtual machine to deploying a highly available pair and creating a web service including SSL offload. So let's begin. So to obtain the uh, free trial you go to JetNexus.com, click on load balancer free trial and then we'll fill out our information here. So give yourself your first name, your, your last name, um, I think the company details, the phone number, most important of all will be the email address because this is the email address that you will be sent the links to download the virtual appliance. So make sure that's correct. This is the one I'm filling out now. Um, and you can also give your website address. This will go into our CRM system so we can then contact you. Uh, and then once you've completed your location uh, click save and submit and you should get a well played sir thanks for getting in contact um, that will then send you an email and the email will look similar to this from the lovely Emily and I'm going to click on the VMware ESX download link and that will start my download So the download will be in the zip format, um, so you're going to have to unzip this. And once you've unzipped this, go to your ESX host. You're going to go File, Deploy, OVF Template. Uh, find that OVA from the unzipped file. Click Next. Next again, give your ALB a name. So I always start with the IP address. This one's going to be 71 Tutorial 1. And then click Next and then select your location, your storage location. I'm choosing thin provision because I'm running out of storage and then finish and then that will build your OVA. And it depends on how quickly your ESX is. Mine is just a small ESX. Um, so not that quick, it's probably about 50 seconds for mine. Let's deploy box two now. Same again, we'll find the OVA file. Give it a name, this is gonna be .72, tutorial two. And we're going to go through the same process again. Click next once this is done. Find your storage. You can go thick or thin provisioned. I'm going thin. Finish and then that will build. And then we'll have two load balancers which we're going to put in a high availability pair. So let's connect to those load balancers and set up the IP address information. First of all we want to start it with the green play button. And that starts the OS, uh, which is Linux, then we run on top of Linux as an appliance. And then initially what you'll get is 10 seconds to interrupt the DHCP challenge. So we've done that, and then we're going to add in our IP address. So this is a command line wizard to add in our network information. Here we put the network mass, so a 24-bit network, uh, slash 24. The gateway is 10.1.2.1 and then a name server or DNS server is 192.168.3.200 and then it'll run checks and then it will start your appliance um, you can see there the GUI address but we can log into the command line with admin and the password is jet nexus all lowercase type help for a list of commands always useful one of those commands um, is ifconfig and we can see the IP address that we've given it to it. Uh, we can also use the machine ID when this machine ID is used to license your box. We can also obtain this machine ID from the license section of the, the graphical user interface. So here we're going to boot up um, box 2. We're going to do things a little bit differently with box 2. This one we're going to let uh, the 10 seconds elapse and we'll let the box go to DHCP. So it just gives you a um, another view of how you can put that network information onto your box. If you have a DHCP server then it will get that information. Uh, of note is if you don't have a DHCP server it will time out and then it will assign a static IP address of 192.168.100.100 um, so you'll always get an IP address. And then you can go onto this one, we can go to admin jet nexus again check the IP address. This time we're going to change it because we want this to be on the same network as our box one or tutorial one. And we're going to use the set green side command. 
So set green side equals 10, 1, 2, 72. And that will change the IP address of the web console or graphical user interface or WUI as some people call it, however you want to call it. Um, then we're going to check that that's worked. ifconfig, if I could spell. Yep, so we're on 72. We've got to add a default gateway now, or a gateway, so we're going to add uh, root add default gw and then the IP address of that gateway and then we can check that with the root command. Perfect. So now we use our, we've got our two boxes, 71 and 72. We can now access our web interface. So first thing we do is HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash the IP address of the first box which is 71 pop in your IP address, uh, sorry your username and your password of admin JetNexus and save that for next time let's go to box 2 now so the same address but with 72 on the end admin JetNexus again and there we have box 2 I always save that password There we go, two blank boxes really. So one of the first things that I would do is probably change the name um, so that we can recognize it. And you'll see the tab up at the top changes too. So if we click update on that, um, if we close the appliance tab, you can see it's gone to tutorial one. Let's do the same on box two or tutorial two. Click update. And we'll close that down so we can see the tab at the top has changed the tutorial too, just so we can recognize them easily. Okay, now let's have a look at the license. So we can see the license is a trial license of 14 days, and you have two virtual IP addresses and four real servers, and there's our machine ID. So I've already licensed these. I'm going to select that license based on that machine ID and click Upload. You'll see you get the green uploading license banner at the bottom. So we'll do the same on box two. Tutorial two, machine IDs match. And then we'll upload and let's go and have a look back at box one. And you can see that's now gone to permanent licenses and I've given myself 32 and 120. So that's 32 virtual IP addresses and 120 real servers which is at the bottom there so that's your nodes or your your hosts your web servers your link servers your SharePoint servers okay let's have a look on box 2 now you see the same as happened to box 2 and this time I'm gonna, I'm gonna configure a service so a service is um, a virtual IP address with a subnet mask and a port. We can give that a name. We can select the service type, and I think we're going to just choose HTTP in this instance. So we can scroll down, click enter, and then we add a real server. So this is a web server. So 201 port 80 again, web server 1, and there we've got a web service. Um, so we're waiting for that server to go online, it's gone online, we passed our health check and then we'll test that web service out. There we go, so we can see we've gone to web server 1. We've only added one server into that virtual service. And you can see web server 2 is blank still, so we're going to add web server 2 into the cluster. So we'll select the unclaimed device and add it to the cluster and we'll watch that be populated so automatically it will sync across and it will go into passive mode so these are now active passive tutorial 1 is active and tutorial 2 is passive so we can actually configure box 2 now because it's in that cluster and we'll add another server into uh, that virtual service so it's web server 2 and that will automatically sync to tutorial to all members of the cluster really 
Uh, here we've only got two in the cluster, so it'll sync to um, tutorial one. And we'll have a look at that in a minute once I've finished typing this out. So there's three servers in our service and we have a look at tutorial one and it's already synced across. What we can do is add a port this time so it will automatically fill out the IP address and the subnet mask. We're going to give it 443 because we're going to configure an SSL offloaded uh, service. Select HTTP again add in our servers, add in our port 80 this time because we're offloading so we're still talking to the web servers on HTTP even though the client will be talking to the load balancer with HTTPS. So we'll add our three servers in again and what we need to do after we've added in this remaining server is to add our certificate to the virtual service. And that's done in the, if you have a look at the, the middle section where you can see server, basic, advanced, um, we're on the server highlighted section. We're going to go to the basic section and we're going to look at the virtual server SSL certificate. We're going to select the default one and click apply and then we're going to go and open up that link. Actually let's just have a quick look at box 2 see if that's synced. Yep, so that's synced. It's got the default one, it's got the three servers. Um, we can even uh, synchronize uh, certificates that are created on, on either box. So here, why don't we create a local certificate? On uh, We're on tutorial 2 so we'll create a local certificate, give it a name And then the other information, um, when you're doing it, obviously you'll fill it out properly. Here I'm just going to put test. I always like to choose 2048 as a minimum. Um, and we'll give it a year's worth of uh, local certificate. Create that certificate. We can actually check that certificates on the box. We go to manage certificates, look at the drop down box, we can see our self signed certificate. So let's go and have a look at um, box one. I will apply that first and then we'll go and have a look at box one and see if that's gone ahead and uh, transferred across. There we see it's gone across already. And we can look at that certificate and we can see. There you go, created on tutorial 2, transferred to tutorial 1, and now we've got, we can just put HTTPS in there, and because it's a local certificate we get the warning, we're going to look at that certificate, see if it's the same one we added, and there you go, test.com. Thanks for watching, and please check out the rest of the series from the links below. There's also a link to get your very own ALBX free trial.